All right, welcome folks. So let's continue our work working with the following matrix A, a two by two matrix, where the first row, uh, excuse me, the first column is four minus one and the second column is five, two. And we wanna find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors um, for this matrix. And so far we've considered the characteristic equation and finding the corresponding roots of that characteristic equation, which happen to be complex roots. In this case, we found that lambda is equal to three plus or minus two i. So how can we find a basis for the eigenspace for each of these eigenvalues? So let's start by considering the eigenvalue three minus two i, this complex eigenvalue. Well, we're gonna solve the same matrix equation. So we're gonna identify the eigenspace by identifying what are solutions to the equation a minus lambda i times vector x gives us the zero vector. Just now, our value for lambda is gonna have a real and an imaginary part to it. And so we set up the matrix equation where now a minus lambda is gonna have, for example, four minus lambda would be four minus three, which gives us one. And then we subtract the minus two i, which gives us plus two i. The five, that doesn't change. The other off diagonal entry minus one doesn't change. And then we take two minus three, which gives us minus one. And then we subtract two i, which gives us plus two i. All right, well, this looks like a fun matrix to work with. Now we have imaginary numbers inside of our matrix. So let's look at the corresponding system of equations that are equivalent to this matrix equation. So the top row would give us the matrix equation one plus two i x one plus five x two, that has to equal zero. And from the second row, we get the equation minus x one plus minus one plus two i times x two is equal to zero. And what's really nice is because uh, lambda one equals three minus two i is an eigenvalue, these two equations should be redundant. We should have a um, free variable. So we just need to solve one of these equations. So I'm gonna pick the second equation to solve for x one, since this looks like a particularly easy um, solution. I can just add x1 to both sides and that gives us the following solution that x1 is going to equal minus 1 plus 2i times x2. So we have a whole bunch of eigenvectors, right? These are not unique. Um, and so if we fix one value for x2, then we can find a basis for the eigenspace. So in particular, if I set x2 equals one because that's a free variable, then that's gonna tell me that x1 would equal minus one plus two i. So we get from this an eigen, a basis for the eigenspace for lambda is equal to three minus two i is therefore the vector x1 is equal to minus one plus two i and x2 is equal to one. So this is one such eigenvector and it gives us a basis for the eigenspace because any other eigenvector for three minus two i is gonna be just a scalar multiple of this vector, which is equivalent to saying if we had chosen a different value for x2, we would get a different value for x1, but the ratio of these terms is still gonna be the same. So the eigenspace for this complex eigenvalue is a complex vector. And next, let's follow a similar process to find the eigenspace for the other eigenvalue of this matrix A, which was lambda 2 was equal to 3 plus 2i. And so we'll do this the same way, and that is we'll set up the matrix equation. When is A minus lambda i times vector x going to give me the zero vector? And so I subtract 3 plus 2i from the diagonal entries. So I would take 4 minus 3, which gives me 1, minus the 2i. And the off diagonal entries stay the same. And then I would take 2 minus 3, which gives me minus 1. And then I subtract the 2i, which gives me a 
last entry of minus 1, minus 2i. And so now we want to solve this matrix equation that has complex numbers in it. So let's look at the two resulting uh, equations that we get for the equivalent system of equations. So the top row would give me one equation, which is 1 minus 2ix1 plus 5x2 is 0. And then from the second row, we get the equation minus x1 plus the quantity minus 1 minus 2i times x2 is equal to 0. And again, these are redundant equations. So I only need to solve one of them to explain what the solutions are to the system of both of them. So let me pick the second equation to work with. Since I can solve this equation by adding x1 to both sides, so that gives me the general solution that as long as x1 is equal to minus 1 minus 2i times x2, then we're going to get an eigenvector for the eigenvalue 3 plus 2i. So um, let's set the value for the free variable x2 equals to 1 again, and then that's going to give us x1 is minus 1 minus 2i. So we get a second basis for the other eigenvalue, um, lambda 2 is equal to 3 plus 2i, which is given by this complex vector, minus 1 minus 2i in the top row and 1 in the bottom row. So, so far we've seen that the matrix A that we were working with in this example has two complex roots, two complex eigenvalues, and the corresponding eigenspace for each of those eigenvalues uh, has a basis which consists of complex vectors. And so uh, it's going to be useful for us to decompose these complex vectors into a real vector and an imaginary vector, similar to how we did for real numbers, where we're able to decompose it into the real part A and the imaginary part B. So um, one of our eigenvectors in this example was the vector minus 1 plus 2i in the first row and 1 in the second row. And so we can write this as a sum of two vectors, namely the vector minus 1, 1, which contains all of the real terms, plus i times the vector 2, 0. So adding these vectors together gives us exactly the vector v1 back. So as with the notation with complex numbers, the same goes for complex vectors in that we can decompose v1 into a real part, which would be minus 1, 1, and an imaginary part, which would be 2, 0.